back to the Sin and Tonic podcast. We always forget to do this at the beginning, and then I have mm-hmm. to edit about 25 minutes of us talking. And just so, added old intros and just... You know me. This is Jeremy. Uh, dear Andy, the artist formerly known as Andy J. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to anyone new watching this. We are not just doing food and booze reviews. We'll do a lot of those. Not right Because now. those are two of our favorite things. <laughs> you know, we do want to just talk about stuff sometimes. This is a we're going to talk about stuff sometime. I hope you'll be able to see this. If not, I'm going to drop a picture in and I'll just describe it to you. One of the things I wanted to talk about that we're going to talk about up front because I've never done this on my channel and you know me I'm like shopaholic wackadoo collector mm-hmm. I have too much shit always have been I've always loved watching anti-haul videos have you ever seen anti-haul videos I've seen a couple okay so you know, know what they are I mean usually yeah. they're anti-haul makeup videos right. oh look at the shirt I'm wearing oh yeah that's an anti-haul <laughs> that, well, I love this shirt this shirt is one of my most comfortable best fitting shirts I love it. somebody asked me if you're ever going to do anti-hauls and I'm like well if anyone should it's me because I buy way too much stuff there's low buys and anti-hauls I have this weird dichotomy thing with being kind of anti-consumerist but mm-hmm. liking artsy things and collecting makeup right. so it becomes this thing where I'm like conflicted I had to break down all of my cardboard boxes from all the crap that I've gotten it was all mm-hmm. piled up in my garage the the amount of cardboard boxes, seeing it all in one place and all the bubble wrap and all this packaging, it kind of hurt a little. It kind of mm-hmm. bugged me. And you get to a point where how much yeah. do you really need? And this is a great discussion right. because you're like the anti-consumer. The embodiment of anti-haul. He was, Jeremy, we're like polar opposites. Although you like to go into stores like dollar stores and look at stuff and you love mm-hmm. to wander around and look at things. Mm-hmm. But I've never seen you do a haul of any kind in my right. whole life. The closest I think we came was when we go to Utrecht art supply in Detroit right. and you buy some paints. And back then we were too mm-hmm. broke to really buy much anyway. The hall yeah. of paints was like three tubes of paint that were like right. U-Track brand. I still have some of them are still there. I've been thinking about doing anti-halls and I don't know if this is going to show up when I hold. Oh yeah, there you go. So this mm-hmm. is the Prince collection I was telling you about. Right. It's getting mm-hmm. a lot of uh, buzz online and the colors are like, really? That Does that say Prince? Yeah. Food? No. It's like, like a community college did a did a project. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, put it together. Oh, ouch! I saved some of the comments because this is going to be a huge thing in my anti hall. Is this Prince Urban Decay? They had like people who worked very closely with him work right. on this collection, but it's mm-hmm. still like so disappointing. I looked at the first forty two comments when they posted this on Trend Mood. The very first comment is a thumbs down. Right. Second one, nothing called Purple Rain. This is a flop. Ashy ass purples couldn't even get that right. One person with smiley faces. Somebody said, pass, they need to bring back Naked Original Palette. This isn't it. Big yikes. I just know, caps, he is looking down and disappointed ASFFF. The disrespect with the skull. Uh Both look so chalky. I'm disappointed in Urban Decay with this one. I wonder if they made it so bad on purpose they need the hype since no one talks about them anymore. So well, sad. Remember how edgy Urban Decay used to be? It used to be. You know, oh, um, God, that, here's one with the, I'm, the sh- I'm actually kind of shocked. Okay, but how is there not an eyeshadow named Purple Rain? Uh-huh. And then it said, I wish that a brand like Kaleidos Makeup got this to manufacture. I realized that those prints rights are pricey and an indie brand has no chance. Look at what they did with an Anginesca palette. That's a, a Kaleidos palette is amazing. They would have killed it with formula and packaging. I will pass and I love prints. And then the best is... Prince would never, capitals, mm-hmm. look so cheap, down, mm-hmm. yikes, why did they do that to Prince? In the words of Prince, a person trying to play me plays themselves. This is so beyond underwhelming, so many missed opportunities. They could have done, a, this is a separate comment, they could have done a diamonds and pearl highlight, raspberry beret, and little red Corvette lipsticks, but they didn't. And then it said Hip Dot would have done this right, who Hip Dot rocks. Disappointing. I wonder if the shades pay off on dark skin tone. They're really light and ashy and chalky. They'll look terrible on dark skin, which we're coming to a comment about that. This collection ain't it. Those swatches look awful. Prince was vibrant. This is just terrible. Big no, no. Thumbs down. Mm. Urban Decay disappoints me. SM, I'm sad. How is there no item called Purple Rain? No purple shade called Purple Rain. I'm surprised none say Purple Rain. Over and over, so underwhelming. Prince would not be proud eyeshadows look patchy and dusty prince would be pissed american yeah. correct the pa- the palettes are 65 ish canadian for 10 shades that don't even have nice looking swatches i think i'm over urban decay which is sad because it used to be such a staple here's mm. one of the booms how can you do a collab with someone of color and m- not make shades deep enough 
Mm. That's what they're going to get called on. So disappointing. Yeah. I wish I could have seen his reaction right now. Please roast this, the swatches skull. So mm. that was like the first, there was, there was one like happy fire hearts and eyes uh -huh. one other couple smiles and people tagged but those were the comments all the first comments on it it was probably people that worked for urban decay <laughs> the two people who like it but yeah we're really and, doing I, it. and this is where i said like the consumerism like it annoys me to do it now like why now and why that there are people who also do makeup review things and they go nobody asked for this that's things one of I them hate it. yeah it, um, it's like, yeah nobody asked for this so i'm thinking about doing anti-halls it's a lot like what we used to say about music everything's been done like how do you do something unique and right. original and different right and with makeup everything's been done the best you can do is come out with some crazy crazy formula or something so unique that i actually have a lot and they're all independent makeup brands though urban decay is so pedestrian now to me it is mm. oh by the way the full collection for that 250 dollars mm. 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 well um it's shocking to me because uh you know when we were young urban decay was really edgy you know, I mean, ur it was urban decay, you know, how, how much more nihilistic. It was, it was like the most, it was the most punk rock makeup I could find. Yeah, it was punk rock and also kind of like, you know, sort of like Riot Girl, you yeah. know, and just, uh, and it wasn't just simply punk rock. It was, it was kind of this whole urban, urban decay, this like urban dwelling culture kind of thing. You remember their, their edgy names for things like black eye and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, they used none to. None of this, none of this shit would fly these days. There would be no sense of humor for it. So there'd be no tolerance for it whatsoever. I think I told you urban decay but so, got out. So on a long enough timeline. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't change. I'm surprised the name didn't changed it's just i mean because at that point this is okay of course i'm kind of going off here because i really haven't looked at anything that they've done in years or whatever but uh Wait, but i mean me if that's the type you. of stuff let me sum it up for you yeah yeah <sighs>If that's the type of stuff that they're doing now, I mean, that's so far, like urban decay of the 1990s would have just died rolling around in the aisles laughing. Yeah. At something like well, this. And I so, think yeah, uh, I think that's where but, I'm coming from too. This is not the urban decay that I used to know and love back when they were just urban decay and they were edgy. So all that aside though, going to your, you know, addressing your sort of, I guess, like original- anti-hall yeah but the thing so they did it they, so they did this thing urban decay creates this palette that is called prince yes with very little apparently like uh licensing to any names or songs or anything like that you know and again like i said you know i haven't really been following uh urban decay very closely in decades but uh, as to even kind of wager to say what is on their mind with regards to releasing a Prince palette. I couldn't even venture to say what, what was said, on Why mind. this? Why now? It occurs to me, and you can like, you might know this off the top of your head, a Romy and Michelle <gasps> palette would be, would be fun. I'm surprised nobody's done that. Nobody's done. I'm going to send Hip Dot a message and say, you need to do a Romy and Michelle palette. Yeah. That'll be our idea. But I'm anyways, gonna be like, we are talking about on my podcast. You need to do Romy and Michelle. Yeah. I am so gonna message them and I'm sending them a link to this. I'm gonna be like, Romy and Michelle would be freaking amazing. Could you imagine what they would do with that if they did this? Yeah. So this is what I'm saying though, with what's the point? This is for one thing, hi, I feel old. Uh -huh, yeah. Clueless 25th anniversary. Right. Yeah. And it's and they have like the paramount pictures. I mean, they did this. There's the thing, and it says TM copyright yeah. and paramount pictures, all rights reserved. And this is a well thought out well planned uh -huh. the palette's called the 411 palette right. when they do a theme they go all in with mm -hmm. hip dot is what i'm so saying so what was the what was the prince one supposed to be uh is it is it to commemorate anything or did they just no! 
not that no, they can't. No, no that's why it yeah. kind of it kind of feels like oh, cash yeah. grabby to me. Right. No, but it was more more than anything. It was different. The, yeah. the notion that there was this uh, makeup company that was sort of doing the okay. uh, kind of I, I don't want to say anti pretty, but. Uh, this is the yeah, this is the desert on here. There's nothing in the description saying that this is to commemorate anything. It just says yeah. the collection and overall campaign was designed in close collaboration with key members of Prince's artistic camp, including creative director Trevor Guy, his beloved muse and close f- friend Damaris Lewis, who began touring with him in 2012, and renowned photographer director Randy St. Nichols, who captured art for the campaign and close collaborator with Prince for three decades. Whatever level of like anything they have to do with Prince is also kind of. So, like they're pretty vague about yeah like, you know the, the, those are like really kind of vague connections you know like oh i've known prince for uh, i've known prince for 30 years i met him in 1989 and then i met him again in, in, in 2013 well, but, i mean but still you know, uh, but regardless of that like why you know there's people who create something and then there's people who are just are something nobody created prince prince created prince you know what i mean like right. prince was prince before or after any of these people came along you know what I mean? Like, so regardless of how closely they worked with him, if you have that many fans commenting, this ain't it, he's looking down and rolling his eyes. And I'm not being social justice worry about, this is just a fact. How are you going to create a collection that does not work on dark skin tones? They basically created a Prince collection for white people is what they did. I know enough about darker skin tones that those colors those purples and golds are going to look ashy af because looking at the swatches if people with dark skin are already commenting i can't wear those colors those aren't going to work on me you just alienated like a huge amount of his fan base prince i you know i think that yeah he did wear makeup but i'm pretty sure he probably wore drugstore makeup you know, oh, I mean, yeah. it was like, I'm sure. this oh, was yeah. not like, it was not some, he had that androgyny thing going, but he had a, a, a bunch of other stuff going. And Prince was actually, when you analyze, he's pretty masculine. I mean, oh, it, yeah. the, like, like the topics of his songs and, and everything were like pretty masculine, you know, <laughs> save for, red Corvette. Save, <laughs> yeah, no, but save for like, oh, you know, blah, 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 you know, his personal style and you, you know, but, yeah, I mean, it's not like he was out doing some like, oh, you know, uh, some mythically alpha male type of thing. It was very masculine type of stuff. Yeah, he had yeah. some androgyny stuff kind of mixed in there. But I mean, to me, I think that I always saw that as just being able to kind of like create this dichotomy because of sort of the very, very guyish libido of this yeah. music. It was like to create texture. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with the whole hair metal thing, maybe less mm-hmm. complex than Prince. But it was the same thing with that. It was this, you know, I mean, nobody's going to say that hair metal songs had like any sort of daintiness to them. No. Um, yeah, but those uh, guys, they wore more makeup than I've ever worn. I think. They did. And here's day. the thing, though. This this was trash. This was glitter trash. You know, this was glam trash. And oh, yeah, I think it's in, in that movie, The Kind of Western Civilization too, The Metal Years. I think that there was some some person even in there talking he's like yeah he's like we used to go, we used to put our makeup on in the car by candlelight <laughs> yeah uh, before going into the club and it was like this is not you know these are not people you know they put on some eyeliner mm-hmm. and probably some 80s you know trampy i mean these guys are, they're not likely going to gordon taylor perusing or the makeup Chanel aisle there yeah, you know they're, they're buying yeah they're buying it you know they're running into they're buying it at the gas station or, or, not or the, the drugstore they're buying it at a pharmacy or or yeah you know woolworths or whatever back then, kmart you know? so kmart you know they're buying it at kmart that itself it just it does it does just seem like some kind of cash grab i mean it's like yeah prince had kind of fun with his with his identity but if prince were alive today he would not be doing a makeup collection they're I like, don't think so like either. He, I, I, 
Yeah, I, I don't think, I think he would regard it as like, yeah, I don't need the money. That's not really. That I'm really a musician. I'm not a makeup a artist. artist. Like, but that's what everything is. People miss a lot. As time goes on, they miss a lot of what something traditionally was. And I don't care to be, and I don't care for people that are gatekeepers of a time, of an era. Good nostalgia is being nostalgic for something that you actually didn't really exist in. Or, yeah. or like we're a, a baby in arms during, you know, but you can still have some sort of connection to it so i don't need to be a gatekeeper for anything but but i just think that on a long enough timeline people start maybe kind of applying their current values to to something else that they're aware of historically and they completely miss the mark by doing mm -hmm. so like they want so badly to apply their understanding of the world to something that they miss what it actually the complexity of yeah. what it actually was and somebody's going to do that to them in the future too you know that's i guess the just the way that that goes that that happens. The passage of time urban decay didn't even have the money or the wherewithal to do all that they just did weird names you know like you said like sidewalk or and, like as yeah. or asphalt asphalt yeah, was one well, of my favorite yeah and they yeah. did weird colors i mean especially their nail polish you know their nail polish were like basically what automotive colors yeah you they know? had like the like grease, to, the grease like, colors yeah. and the oil colors yeah. And, yeah. and they did the, those like the dark purples with like metallic in them and stuff mm -hmm. like that here's the thing back then i think that prior to that and probably the few contemporaries that they had at the time that like, sort of came around at the time makeup was sort of like a pretty serious like not terribly adventurous type of thing. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, it was like, you've got the most adventurous that you're going to go is like your blood red lipstick, yeah. fire engine red lipstick. Or taking black eyeliner, eyeliner and using and making like black lipstick out of black eyeliner. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. But so like that. And so then I think that, yeah, like, you know, in, in that way, Urban Decay kind of comes around and sort of makes a commercialized version of those sort of hacks. Mm -hmm. you, you know, oh, don't use your eyeliner on your lips. We'll just make black lipstick, black lipstick for you, yeah. you know, or, or uh, and lipstick. then from that follow with like, oh, here's all these bruisey looking eye colors. Yeah. And stuff like that. Like you said, the hard candy. These are these first companies that are sort of kind of making these things that are, uh, that you get that are sort of outside the line. They're not, you no, know, obviously they're going to be for people kind of try to find something, a style, like the kind of the classic offerings. And in that way, you know, they probably, created a little bit of at the time I don't really remember too well but a little bit of one of those kind of shakeups like oh are you know do we need to be getting into this do we need to mm -hmm. be doing this type of stuff you know but anyways going back to the to the original thing cut to uh, decades later and now I mean it's like with all of these small makeup companies and all of these like even just like influencers having some of their brands and stuff like that now you got you know boutique makeup even if not boutique quality you've got boutique palettes so it comes down to this though you get into these pop culture slash consumerism symbiotic beasts where it's like okay we want to make a prince palette but that means that we have to license all of these names of these songs mm -hmm. and stuff to do you know it'd be like trying to make a documentary about uh motley crew without licensing any of their music to make yeah. a documentary. every time you see them it's some others it's some vaporwave like it's some <laughs> soundcloud vaporwave song <laughs> that's like you know that's royalty free it's just it doesn't work so you get to the point where why you're doing it, but why they're doing it is, uh, I think, because uh, it's that mad, it's a gold rush right now. Like you described, everybody wants to throw their hat into that ring. It's like right now is the gold rush for that. So you're going to see a lot of kind of wackiness, I think. Yeah. Um, and you're going to see a lot of like head scratching, like, I don't know, what's the point with that and stuff like that. And you're going to see a lot of consumerism because people that are into it, they are are all, you know, excited by all of these choices. Here's the thing. Colors of things, they evoke in your mind this like wide-eyed kind of need to touch the pretties, 
to have the pretties. Yeah. Like, it's kind of an interesting thing. Like, you know, you ever be on like Instagram and stuff, or like if you've ever like, you know, if you like, like I had searched for uh, New Balance shoes, right? And then all of a sudden, like millions, and whenever I'm on like some website or news aggregate where they've got like, you know, scrolling advertisements, millions of colors of New Balance shoes, just, you know, an infinite variation of like colors, you know, <laughs> and you're like, like I ones just want that black. Are, yeah, ones that are all earth tones, ones that are like neon colors, ones that are like just the craziest like rainbow array of colors and stuff like that. And it's like, they're all basically the same shoe, but the, it evokes this type of thing in your brain where you're like, oh, the, oh give me the pretties. And makeup does the same thing. Yeah. It, even like, like you mentioned before, when we used to go to the art store and you'd look at this like array of paints, remember Old Holland? Mm -hmm. when old holland came out it was oh. kind of the same thing they were all in these hand crimped you know foil containers. I still have mine. endless endless amount of colors you know mm -hmm. and then williamsburg one same thing when all i went to new york this... to the williamsburg store it was like mm -hmm. yeah was and like then all of a sudden Mecca. williamsburg did the thing where it was like all of a sudden there was all these like earthy tones uh, you know earthy paint colors yeah made from like all of these you know single pigment crazy source pigments and even that was real easy to get that like those oh the pretties now i was very broke at the time so what i did <laughs> was, was i rationalized in my brain that a pigment is a pigment you know they're sourcing these pigments from someplace and 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 they're probably sourcing the same ones now yes if you're mixing these colors yourself then you can have a higher degree of pigment per oil in one or the other. But what does that even mean? I understand that one's going to be like more vibrant and, and buttery and everything like that. But there's so many cases, especially for painters, and I don't care if you're a painter out there, you know what I'm talking about. You, the paint you use in such different consistencies all the time, uh, over and over, that you're rarely, rarely getting to really enjoy some that highly pigmented, you know, sensation of it. And even if you do, you get, you get over it, you know. Yeah. It's like that rush of like a new color. And then you're like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And I, so I rationalize in my brain that these are all the same pigments. I can get a few things that I really like to fill kind of every role that I need. And I was fine with that. Keep in mind, oil paints last forever. I have oil paints that are 35 years old that are still perfectly fine. Yep. I, 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 I mean, perfect. They haven't even separated oil-wise. They're still perfectly mixed. I can squirrel away oil paint and know that it's going to last my entire life. I have this one tube of this uh, Amber Lake. It's like some, the, the pigment is like some highly toxic nickel. <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's like this like super transparent, super super washy amber color it'll last me the rest of my life you know i don't use it enough I have one tiny little like key size bit can wash an entire canvas this is a thing that occurred to me too that you said about that rush that you get of the pretty thing you want mm -hmm. i'll see your pigments and raise you brushes remember oh, yeah. me and you going to stores and be yeah. like Ooh, this filbert. Right. Oh, and, and there were like 20 sizes of filberts, and we wanted like mm. every size of filbert. Well, that was the same thing. I realized at some point that I could just find, not only could I, but I should just find the ones, number of ones that were the necessities. Yep. And I broke it down into two, two things. I, I essentially, like, I would go through. And I, I never needed really small brushes because I knew I never painted that way. So I would get like a two, I'd get like a four, I'd get an eight, and like a, a, a 10. And then, and yeah. You never um, used fan brushes. I, I have a fan brush. I never use it. But um, I only found one use for a fan brush and it's dog whiskers. When I did. Oh, do, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. When you're doing fur the dark on work, dogs yeah. and the whiskers, yeah. fan yeah. brushes perfect yeah. but anyway then i broke it down into obviously shape well i would use i would use a lot of filberts never needed rounds yep. didn't use them for anything i'd use filberts and brights and i could get everything done that i needed with filberts and brights yeah and then material i i wanted some I had some really soft uh like white you know teflon ones and then i would get some really stiff synthetic brushes that way i could do what i wanted that was my anti-consumerism talking myself out of things that was my anti-haul 
was yeah. I would carefully, carefully think about the things that I needed. Then I would just train myself to use the ones that I had. And that worked yeah. out very good. Uh, this is with paintbrushes and oil paints having literally no shelf, you know, a hundred year shelf life. Makeup's not the same thing. So if you're buying all of these palettes and everything like that, you're, you know, you better be get, you better be going out eight days a week. <laughs> or being, you know, or eight, being a YouTube makeup review channel yeah, where you're doing. Right. Which is a strange, which then all of a sudden makes it this like very, very strange, like microchasm of consumerism, buying these things to review. And I guess that maybe the few people that that particular thing appeals to are, are going to be grateful that you did. And, you know, there's going to be a bunch of other people that are going to be don't need it. I like this other obscure product that only me and four other people like. <laughs> So like a like a color called ricin. <laughs> right. But yeah. but then but when you get down to it though, I guess you know it come it, it sort of comes to a thing where people I guess have been sort of doing the anti-haul thing in, in certain in industries or certain hobbies, interests, musicians uh, for a long time. You, you know. were building your own pedals. Yeah, pedals come in, in the music world, pedals seriously are probably the closest thing to the kind of world of gotta have it or yeah. don't need it type of thing. It's and I think that's because the pedal industry has gotten big. The huge boutique pedal industry oh, is yeah. huge. I think that's part of it too is there's people that have a uh, hundred pedals and they're not a band. They don't record and they don't play shows. You know, <laughs> they have a hundred different flavors of, of overdrive to sit at home and play clap tone songs, you know. So it's so um, weird. Yeah, but it is. probably look so at me a, with my makeup and say the same thing. Like, that's so weird. Why does she have like 200 pallets? Yeah, so it's a weird thing. People want to get it before somebody but they, they want to get it to have it, you know, yeah. I guess. The, the, the only difference is, is that pedals you can move on when you need to you know there's reverb least of all there's ebay but then there's a bunch of other retailers that are just need for musicians and it's so easy to move pedals on with that with with that you know what's um, really what's really with crazy. makeup you can't really do the same thing you know oh uh, um, yeah oh no, you can oh really oh mercari yeah mercari yeah. you can go on there and well, i would, I, I, would sure. I look for things and i look for like new inbox never opened but there are ones on there that are yeah. like, I use this makeup palette, but only to swatch it for a video. I never actually used it. And it's oh, like, interesting. yeah. So they'll say, is it, has it been lightly used? Is it used? And let me tell uh -huh. you, there is a market for people who are like, shit, I always wanted that palette. I can't afford it. Well, that girl used it and she only <laughs> used it once and sanitized I just it. used it once. I had to buy it real quick to cover up a herpes breakout. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> I wanted cheap. to think to blend in my Moving it on cheap. And the thing is like brushes and painting and blending. I mean, I was an oil painter, paint and drew my whole life. I was painting and drawing before I learned to do yeah. makeup. Then I learned to do makeup and I was still mm. a painter. And they're remarkably similar. That would be an interesting video comparing my painting brushes to my makeup brushes. Well, the brushes, I mean, obviously the thing with brushes. Brushes last brush, forever. Yeah, they last forever and type of thing. And you might be, you might go in and out of favor yeah. for them. I, that's what I do. When when you get into the notion of an anti-haul, here's what it comes down to. If you're talking about something like that, something that is a that's uh, style-based, trend-based, consumable, and goes bad, then you really have to kind of get into the idea of being able to tell what you need and what you don't need. Wants versus more needs. Than ever. Yeah. There is this mentality like gotta be the first one to have it because it makes me the coolest. Uh, right. If that's in fact what's going on, then yeah, I mean that's you know, that's like gonna be non not fulfilling for almost any consumer item that people yeah. have. Anybody that wants to have uh, have it because they want to be the first to have it. I mean, they're not probably never going to be happy with anything. You're constantly chasing like the next big thing. I think that w when it really comes down to it though, obviously this is a kind of like the gold rush right now. When it's like the gold rush, there's a lot of products. It's sort of like, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, turn of the century when everybody had their patented medicines for yeah. something and everybody had their, what their better mousetrap. Uh, nobody knew what the best mousetrap was yet. Yeah. Everybody had this. Everybody wanted to be 
in this game. And so it was like really market driven, people competing against each other for a market share. And there was a lot of useless stuff that came out and a lot of good stuff and the good stuff kind of uh, rose to the top and became the venerable selections and the bad stuff is sort of like forgotten. But I think it's kind of the same thing now. It's like if there's so much stuff being put out right there's gonna you know there's gonna be some number of people some set of people that are going to be buying this stuff and then there's going to be some set of people that are talking about this stuff but i think you know i had seen it mentioned a couple times because i was like reading about anti-halls and you know i'd seen it mentioned a couple times about it being specifically this sort of like anti-consumerism movement Mm -hmm. i really think that like sure there might be an example or two here or there about that but i really think that's kind of like a magazine Zine writers take on something yeah. like this, you know, because the movement is because that idea is very organic. And when, you, when you're writing about it for a magazine, you're like trying to find some philosophy about it to like mm-hmm. have to, to make this a literal offering. And it's like the shit people do online can't be described like that. But they've done it their whole life. You know, everybody, every generation has done it too and everything. You know, when I was a kid and we're talking about Atari games or Commodore 64 games, you know, everybody was talking. Just to like our, big time. Well, sure. But everybody was like, you know, like you're a little kid and you can't afford like you can't afford much of anything on your own or you're going to get it for a holiday or, you know, and it's like getting something special. You know, the topic of conversation moves to. So what do you think about this game? it seems cool are you gonna get it no nah, because i can't see myself like it's not like really playing it enough to do that oh what do you think about this game oh that game's great i can't live without it you know well what do you mm-hmm. think about this eh, eh, if you get it I'll, like i'll play it that type of thing so those type of decisions i think of like people have always made those as long yeah. or at least they've always made them as long as there's been consumerism so i don't think that anti-hall is anti-consumerism i think that I think that it's a natural reaction to a world where you have millions of choices, more choices yeah. than you need. Interesting. And I think that if anybody kind of has their sort of come to religion moment, whether it be like because they just realize they don't have the money for everything or they realize they just kind of look at it and are sort of like frightened or disgusted at how much they've spent on something, you know, or if they just don't have room for all this stuff and they just find themselves throwing stuff away and feel bad for it, then then whenever you have that, you're going to eventually have people that have their come to religion moment where they say, okay, what do I really need? You know what? And it was the same thing. You know, it was the same thing for me with 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 oil painting stuff. And it's the same thing for me with music gear. Uh, you know, what do I really use? What do I really need? Am I gonna yeah. ever use this? I got tight. You know, even when uh, if I bought something that was like a flight of fancy or to spoil myself with, and it's and I saw it sitting around for a year, then. I got smart to the fact that, you know what, uh, that's the, not the type of thing that's going to make me happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically what I think about it uh, after kind of having just sort of dipped my toe into that little world is that I haven't seen enough to, of it to say that I'm sure there's some, there's probably some people out there that spe- are like specifically like uh, uh, anti-consumerism or whatever, but I don't think that that was the original notion behind mm-hmm. an anti-haul if they I were think anti-consumer that, they wouldn't be doing anti-hauls on a makeup channel well i think it's uh, it's just it would be the an same, all anti-haul it's the channel. same it, it's just the same type of thing that people have always done you know yeah. smash it or trash it love it or leave it uh type of thing now if somebody is legitimately coming to you and saying listen um, this palette's coming out uh, in the spring, but honestly, I think that there's all this and more on this thing that's a much better value. Or if you bought, if you have this other thing, then you already have everything that, or you can already accomplish everything that you basically can with this idea. Yep. Because what it comes down to it they're just compounded pigments yeah you know that's what um, i'm saying they're and some of them are so similar and just rearranged right and, and then, so and then the idea of a palette yeah i get it it's like okay it's, uh, a um it's eye candy yeah the, ideally what you're supposed to be thinking is is that this is something that an expert or that an influencer or that like a trained eye put together this palette 
to be used. It's their aesthetic sensibility. And if you mm -hmm. use this all together, kind of in this way, you'll evoke this mood or you'll evoke this style. If you've got somebody that's saying to you, do you really need this? Like, I'm not getting this because of this, 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 then that's useful information. If you mm -hmm. just have somebody saying, I'm not buying this because I hate brown, then that's not useful information. And no. uh, quite frankly, if you have somebody just say, saying like, you should stop giving, they, these companies rehash everything all the time and you should stop giving them your money. Well, that's a valid philosophical argument, but it's certainly not it certainly doesn't help anybody because there's going to be somebody that's buying their first palette. Then there's going to be somebody that's buying their 150th palette. The anti hauls I watch are so well thought out and they're so good. And that's where I kind of started saying, yeah, this is, I need to think more critically about what I own. Well, then that's and, useful if yeah. you do that. So wrapping it up, what's your thoughts? Because I got one more thing. I got something that I want us to that I want us to do a thought experiment right after this. But so wrapping it up, what's your final words on anti halls? Concisely? I think it's a prioritizing thing, like right. priorities, like what's important to you. And I'm like, what I don't have is a kitchen. What's getting to be more important to me? I have plenty of makeup. I have plenty to talk about. I have plenty of content to create. My priority now is kind of my home and creating the mm -hmm. home I want and the life I want. It makes it harder to do that if you're just focused on shopping and what's the right. new thing all the things you can buy like you said they're things you're buying started seeing the kitchen coming together it became this thing where i'm like wow this is a this is my environment this isn't mm -hmm. just stuff in a room this isn't like oh i have mm -hmm. this pretty brush i love that brush but it's not a room it's not an environment my environment has become my priority like how can i enjoy all this stuff i have and all the makeup i have and everything if i'm my environment isn't the way i want it there has to be a balance my environment is now becoming more important than if I have the next new palette. So it's specifically not, it's specifically not non-consumer. Correct. Because you're re remodeling the kitchen. I think uh, uh, mine's much more concise. Is that, <laughs> yeah, mine's um, a spiritual journey. Yeah. Essentially, I think you can be critical of an industry and you can be uh, suspicious of an industry and suspicious of their marketing and stuff and still not be anti Consumers, consumers. Mm -hmm. Any individual industry goes through these different spells of usefulness and uselessness, of pumping out junk or trying to resell the same thing over and over again. You can be critical of that industry and you can be mindful of what you need and what you don't need. And, and it's still not anti-consumerism mm -hmm. yeah, because a lot of times industries deserve scrutiny. Mm -hmm. hopefully get better because of it. okay so here's what I, I i thought we could do just to kind of close this off with a little bit of fun is <laughs> a thought experiment okay where let's find a handful of the most inappropriate uh and poorly conceived intellectual properties to make palettes on and listen it's then, but it's got to be good. You can't just pick something so you know so awful. You can't just say, "Oh, let's make a Schindler's List palette." <laughs> it, it, it has to be an it has to be an earnest idea that somebody might actually like try to do and just total hit and miss. And mine, well, I'm going to start it off Sesame Street. <sighs> that. <laughs> well, just Sesame Street in general. I can imagine it too in my head. Um, these like tomato <laughs> greens, tomato greens, and and, uh, and these like push up, push up popsicle oranges. Type yeah, you have of like thing. Elmo orange and Big Bird yellow. Yeah, yeah. Snuffleupagus brown. Yeah, and uh, and Cookie Monster blue or Grover. Yeah. Gro uh, actually, yeah, Grover you know, Blue, Oscar Green. Why are uh, we doing this? Somebody's going to watch this and make it. You know what I could do? They better. Um, they 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 shouldn't. You know what? Because if you want to, if you want to challenge me, we're going to up the ante now. Yeah. Okay, we're going to come up with an. We're going to come up with the best inappropriate, like bad idea for a palette. And then I'm going to actually make it because oh, I have collections of individual magnetic oh. palettes. Oh, okay. And yeah. I can mix and match all the colors and make our inappropriate palette. Okay. We are back.
All right. We had to take a water break. So anyways, but okay. So again, though, poorly, bad taste and poorly conceived is the real thing that we're looking for. I'm talking like, like, ooh, like, cringe. like. Yeah, cringe. Like, oh no, why? James Charles Ballot. Oh, but, oh yikes! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was funny. Shots fired. See, I'm finding it hard to think of one too, but I know that there's, I know that there's really bad ones out there. Seinfeld. <laughs> That's oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know what you would do. How would you even, what would you even do? Kramer, George Costanza, yeah. new. Oh, new. Lego, Lego, uh, a, a Lego palette. I think somebody Lego. did that. No, somebody. Uh, that's to- boring. No, it, I mean, it's, it'd be all primary colors, which they probably are. But I guess if, if you actually did like the whole Lego palette, I actually don't think it would be received that poorly. And no, I don't think no, that people would, would use huge. it, but I think that they would. This has turned out to be a huge miss because I can't think of anything really bad in this. And I know that, and I know that they're Pulp Fiction. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, that's pretty Any good Tarantino one. movie, Inglorious Bastards, <laughs> The Palette. <laughs> um wait hold on yeah a whole quentin tarantino collection of palettes would be just a horrible idea i mean these are really bad these are almost so bad that they wouldn't in earnest be done you know? <laughs> like, uh, like i'm trying to find i'm finding it hard to think that they're man man alive i am not uh oh yeah. Oh, a Fifty Shades of Grey palette. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, I think Jeffree uh, Star already did that. It was yeah. called Cremated. Can you imagine, though, like talking to your uh, talking to your manufacturer? I want to do a Fifty Shades of Grey palette. And then they send you the prototype and it's Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, You're like, that's not uh, what I meant. Like, <laughs> and they took it literally. You're like, yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean, that, that movie's cringe anyway. So is Twilight. So, I mean, I'm thinking cringe movies. This is a pretty nuanced question because here, this is one of those things where the perfect answer to it is not easy to find because most of the answers are either things that it's like, well, actually, that I could kind of see that. Or they're just so crazy that nobody, no, no one would actually really think of it or, or nobody would actually propose it. Or it would never make the cut. Uh, like one of them I was thinking was a Tim Burton Batman 25th anniversary Batman palette, but people would buy that. Yeah, you know, there's somebody it's buying Burton. it. Yeah. It's- the answer to this is somewhere. And incidentally, anybody that has a better idea, put Comment. it in the comments because yeah. I uh, challenge you to come up with horrible palette ideas based on intellectual properties. Which mm-hmm. is uh, it could be movies, people, uh, products, but it's got to be good. Like I said, it's got to be something. The, the perfect answer is something that like is something that they might make, something that might pass committee, but would but would be looked back upon as or and be wildly panned on the internet as being what were they thinking type of thing. This really stems from the the Prince uh, palette, like just huge miss. Totally inappropriate. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, such a poor representation of of the intellectual property or of the the person. That's the type of thing, just huge hit or miss. And why would you even do it to begin with? Yeah, it's really tricky because you think like, as much as I said that, I'm like, wow, I kind of like to see a Pulp Fiction palette because you could do like the yellow, you know, the yellow and black, the jumpsuit she mm-hmm. wore. Like, I mean, so many right. things you could do with that. You could do one called like Honey Bunny, one called Vincent, Royale with cheese. You could do right. an orange called Royale yeah. with cheese. I kind of yeah. want to create this palette now. I may have to there create. There you go. I think, yeah. I, think, I may yeah, have to create a see. Pulp Fiction. See, but this is the problem. This yeah. is the problem with this question I thought it would be crazy. because most of the I'm things that you come up with are are at least something that would make it past the committee if you had some pull. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to think of things that oh, are so... Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> Lowe's. Yeah. Uh, Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. 
I was, I know I'm trying to think of things that are so contrary to makeup, like, like that you would never, you know, like something you would never consider mm. like having makeup, having anything to do with, which makes me start thinking in like the sports realm, like a gym, right? Like, Oh, planet fitness palette. <laughs> that's yeah strange. i mean that's that, like that wouldn't have there wouldn't be a lot of people interested in that for sure that would be you know there's gonna be somebody who's gonna be like you do it in the colors and you do like yeah. the planet fitness palette and you have there like be a lot of people interested you know in that. names like you're killing it yeah <laughs> beast right. spot me bro well you just have to have one called squats oh my nobody's god nobody's done any of these things in planet fitness sorry <laughs> the planet fitness is be i thought uh, i thought monday was bagel day okay well, think about it this week and and uh we'll revisit this at the top of uh the podcast next week quaker hill knife palette quaker hill knife palette gordon lightfoot palette I may, I may, okay, that's, uh, um, I may have one, I may have one, and I'm frankly shocked that they haven't done it, a Target palette. Uh, now that would pass. White and red. White and red with the, the bullseye on it and mm -hmm. the little dog and like, and the, and they would just have colors that were like, you know, the white and red clearly, but then things in the store or something. Well, you know, you know Target, I guess, used to have neon in their stores. And I think yeah. they had like a, a cyan and pink uh, neon that would be along the walls. I think they had a green. Target's so weird. I've never been a Target person. I, I was there probably, uh, Probably about 18 months ago, year and a half ago, two years ago. I went I'm to wondering go, how we're still I, friends and you're not a target person. Yeah, I, I went there looking for a memory foam pillow for, for one of the ones that has the dip in it, you know, like the big side and the small side, the classic sort of neck memory yeah. foam pillow. Because I had like a pinched nerve in my neck, so I wanted to buy one. That's and I was surprised to see that Target had produce. That oh, was yeah, like the yeah. weirdest thing oh, to see. Oh my God, I'll take you to my Target when you come out. It's crazy, yeah. the stuff they have there. This is why I said this was a thought experiment because yeah. it's one of those things where it might not have a Definitive great uh, logical ending. Yeah, uh, but uh, again, I would be interested to uh, know what anybody thinks in the comments because this is a better crowdsourced idea. Sometimes yeah. somebody just comes up with this brilliant idea. Sometime these palettes are going to show up for sale somewhere. We're going to be like, damn it. You know, we have this YouTube video we put up and we said that, where's our cut? Yeah. <laughs> Don't Cause, worry. Because cause there's so many things that think like they'd be so mundane, but then you're like, oh no, that would probably, you know, like people would, that would, would buy that. Like a Jolly Rancher palette or a Starburst palette. I just thought of one that's like so mundane, so completely mundane that it's almost depressing. And yet like you, you like, it could be done. Like it just, it, this would be like a, Possible but poorly conceived idea. <laughs> An officer and a gentleman palette. <laughs> There's so many movies that they could do that are so <laughs> on, <like> golden, <laughs> on Golden Pond. <laughs> cocoon. <laughs> cocoon. cocoon well. All of your favorite memories of Cocoon. <laughs> In a, in, a, in a beautiful fall palette. Platoon. Platoon. Apocalypse yeah. now. Uh, 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 beaches. <laughs> I was trying to think the of beaches, a really sad movie. The Beaches palette. <laughs> oh, Steel Magnolias. Yes, yeah, Steel Magnolia palette. That would be a good palette, <clears throat> honestly. Yeah, there's so many weird intellectual properties that you could do. I got a good palette for you. And then this is it. We're closing out after this. Yeah. World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> yeah. WWF. Yeah. WWE. The WWF, the palette. Yeah. Now, yeah. Kristen would buy that, who does uh, Beauty Beatdown, because she's a huge wrestling fan. She'd really, like, make it happen. In fact, she might know, Kristen, uh, if you see this, comment if someone's ever done a wrestling palette. I, we need to know. NASCAR. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I know. It's bedtime. Okay, we're going to go. Uh, All righty. So, Nothing I, was solved. 
nothing was solved and we just bantered for hours as usual yeah. and didn't come to any conclusions really thank you for watching and the buns like i need the buns. i need to go the to bed. buns the buns the bun buns i think she needs water look at her she's like nah. Nah. she oh. looks like a tree sloth <laughs> she, <laughs> she looks like sid from ice age yeah she's <laughs> What the heck is she doing? All righty. Um, a fuzzy Sid. Come back next week. Comment below with your strange palette ideas and things that could maybe happen, but we hope inappropriate don't. and misguided. Inapp inappropriate and misguided. And yeah. that'll be a fun discussion. Don't worry. We won't roast you if it, they're really bad. We'll laugh. No, it's an ongoing conversation. So. Yeah. So, yes, and this is going to be an ongoing thing. We're going to talk about more of this, this, and much more in the next second time. Okay. Like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Talk to us below. Bye bye. Bye. Peace out. Okay.